think of growing up, like one of my biggest anxieties and fears was like, I'm going to have to do something because I had sisters. I had a bunch of cousins. They were all beautiful. I was mm-hmm. just like, this was going to send me to jail. Mm-hmm. Like that, I, mm-hmm. I just knew it. I was like, because of the things that happened and I had to defend things, you know what I mean? Like things that I had to look for people for. And I realized later on that I almost had a resentment towards women um, mm-hmm. because of it. I was extra judgmental about behavior. Like, you know what I mean? When I went to mm. college, like, girls who, like, got drunk in parties and all this stuff, I used to be extra, like, yo, what the hell's wrong with you? And da da da. Because for me, wow. I was like, you're jeopardizing my safety. Like, when you do mm. these things, wow. it makes puts me in danger because I can't sit idly and watch shit happen. I'm going to have to come step in and defend you. So when you wear that, you're, you're now threatening my wow. safety. You know mm. what I mean? When my cousin who has a nice body puts on something and walks down the street with me, now I'm gonna have to fight. Be like, man, you yeah. just came yeah. out looking <laughs> like a um, snack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the, like, we don't get, the, we don't get the, mm-hmm. you know. Then society won't, they won't say like, oh, you're just being a man defending. You're immediately criminalized. Mm-hmm. You know, and we've right. had to like look. If you read the book Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome, it really talks about that particular thing, mm-hmm. like how there was a resentment that was built and that created a rift because fathers knew certain things were gonna happen to their daughters and wives. And they couldn't really do nothing about it. And then mothers nothing. and daughters knew that certain yeah. things were going to happen to them and that these men couldn't do nothing about it either. You know what I mean? So it was like kind of this like... So the, women grew up feeling like their men yeah. are powerless. Yes. And men mm-hmm. growing up... Resenting yeah. women for being something that exposes their powerlessness. I remember one time it was like four guys, five guys, like across the block. And I'm like, I know I got to cross these guys. Mm-hmm. And I'm already telling myself to just like be cool, but stay aware. I'm coming this way, they start crossing this way. And I'm like, here we go. Where you coming from? Where you going? And it's just like, I don't want to say anything. How you doing tonight? I'm good, thank you. Like, you just want to keep it like, don't talk to me. I can't tell you how many times I've just been in the club, being that girl that's drinking and having a good time and being with my girlfriend and having some dude think he could just push up or even if I'm there by myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And even before I even knew Daoud's name, he was the brother that would come up and just kind of like stand nearby <laughs> and let another brother know like, he, oh, oh, he plays no games with it. He I comes over it. real chill wow. and he will let a brother know like, she's really not checking for you. Like, wow. let her, so, like, let her chill. That's, that's we, this kind of man is hard to find. You guys, y'all are hard to find because there's more brothers on the street doing all the wish wash because they're, especially because they're, they're hanging in groups and nobody wants to be the punk. I mean, I'm just really struck by you, a woman who loves black people and people of color. Oh, yeah. Taking the way to avoid the brothers. Like, we, you and I, we, we sense that in the mm-hmm. air. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was raised similarly in terms of like how my mom raised me to be super uber respectful. Mm-hmm. So, I've never catcalled, right? And when someone catcalls, I actually feel the pain. Mm-hmm. 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 But have never, don't know the language or hasn't acquired the language to figure out how to step to how to address and do like, yo, bro, that's not, that's not what we do. And I really want to be able to figure that out, right? Because I remember years ago, just in terms of language, because language is deep, because mm-hmm. language communicates intent, right? I'm always, and it's about black, about brothers stepping to brothers. I was in London with this other poet cat, and this is 20 years ago, and we were talking and I don't know what the context is, but I said the word faggot. I was like, something, 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 faggot. And Flatbush born, blah, blah, blah. I'm black American, but raised around, crib, you know, crab cats. And this dude who's Trinidadian, Roger Roberts, he's like, hold on, hold on, what'd you say? He's like, yo, don't use that word. I said, no, nah, but you know, he said, no, mm-mm, mm-mm. And we were, he didn't, he wasn't doing it to show out. It was nobody else in the room, but he and I. And he was like, that, that's like one of the most crazy disrespectful words ever. Like if someone used the word nigga in the room with you, how would you feel? It's the same shit. If not, it's even more vile. You should never use that. And I don't, I don't let people use that word around me. Mm. And I was like, yo, and I love this dude. And he mm. shut the fuck out of me. <laughs> <laughs> and then it forced me to go deep, right? And to study the word. And like, even like one of the dictionary things, like a pyre is like a piece of wood. You put it up your life. And people used to, burn people because of how they wanted who they wanted to make love to mm-hmm. wow like, wow those words came out of my mouth mm. Mm. so then it's like becoming over that time that dude that in certain situations 
that we can be like, nah, bro, we don't, that's just not the vibe. But then, like you said, when cats are in packs, yeah, what's the language? Yeah. You right. know? And I think that goes hand in hand with when they are in packs, it's just toxic masculinity in a whole different, it's mm-hmm. just overcomes the whole pack. Even but if even, you, go ahead. Even in, because a lot of times we look at that as the dudes on the block. But I've been sitting in the Brooklyn Moon <laughs> mm-hmm. with cats who are supposedly enlightened, right? Enlightened. Right. And a bunch of them get together and it's like, yo, I gotta bounce because right now I can't. This is this is crazy right now that y'all are talking like this. Right. And y'all are supposed to be the enlightened ones, right? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. we're supposed to be in an enlightened safe space for brothers. And here y'all are basically sounding worse than the cats in the street because y'all know better. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like when I was growing up in Philly, I didn't a lot of times going back to the F word or whatever, I didn't know no better. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. certain things just rattled off. You know what I mean? And I was just like but when people would enlighten me. And some people would check me, but they wouldn't check me. They would, like, hand me a book. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> right. But then I'm like, all right, let me read this, you know? And mm-hmm. a, a couple of friends of mine even recently was like, I remember when you told me to stop using the word bitch. And I was like, because whenever I would be in a barbershop, only time they would say bitches was when black women. Mm-hmm. It was like white women and these bitches. Deep. Mm-hmm. Are y'all not hearing yourselves right now?